Hello and welcome to Sport This Morning. I'm Cecilia Amorbe. It's great to have you join us again. I'm Taya Salah. Okay, let's get started with the show and what happened early hours of this morning. <laughs> it's Dream Team. Yes. Are they still dreaming? Well, for the under 23 national team side, they are through to the quarterfinals of the under of the Olympics yeah. football tournament. Yes. And for them, they were able to beat Sweden by long goal. And it was Sadiq Umar who gave them that long goal. And right now, they are really up and running. Yeah, and they're still dreaming of gold because they're in the quarterfinals, like you said, with one game to spare. Okay, also on the show, I'm still on the Olympics. Um, Arna Quadri stunned, you know, world number seven, uh, Chuang, to reach the fourth round in the table tennis event. Arna Quadri, Africa's only uh, surviving player, at the Olympics right now still going strong, still doing well for Nigeria, and he will next play Timo Ball from Germany in the fourth round. Wow, no one saw this coming at all. I mean, uh, Chuang, number seven uh, in the world, uh, number six. Um, see that see. Yeah. Know, so, I mean, just incredible, incredible uh, result for Arnold Quadri. I think it's the biggest uh, win of his career. Yeah, okay. definitely. It's the biggest win of his career because for you to be ranked fourth yet in the world, and of course you're beating someone seventh, you know, at the Olympics, yeah. it's something that is really huge. Hopefully, the fourth round tonight, mm -hmm. Arnold Quadri should be able to make it to the quarterfinals. Remember, he's the only surviving African right yeah. now at incredible. the Olympics. A lot of pressure. <laughs> Yeah, and well, we're still on the show as yeah, well. Yeah, definitely. So it looks like it's an Olympic show uh, today because uh, there are some major upsets that happened overnight in Rio. That man right there, world number one, Novak Djokovic, is out in the first round after losing to Martin Del Potro in straight sets. Cecilia, you didn't see this one coming. I didn't see it. I didn't see it at all. I mean, when, Sarah, when, when the one of Venus happened, I said, okay, I understand. Yeah. Okay. But Djokovic, I didn't understand one, that at but all. But then you have, to, you have to consider the opponent to face in Martin Del Potro, you know, a major winner, uh, you know, a great player by, uh, by his own standards. And, uh, but injuries, are, they've affected him over time. But then, I think, um, you just, uh, I don't know. I mean, Djokovic le left the court in tears. He couldn't believe what happened to him. So the wait continues for another Djokovic now in terms of winning uh, gold at the Olympics. Uh, he said her boy is on, on his side. I mean, I mean he can really? also still win. Oh, yeah, he, he, he can. 20, 28? Yeah, he's going, so? he's going 30, you know. And the next Olympics is in uh, Tokyo in four years' time. So at two years' three. Okay. At four years' three's age. He should be ready for that. Okay, yeah. He should be ready, definitely. Well, and he should be ready. About Djokovic, he's, he's a fighter. He never gives up. And I'll be surprised if four years down the line we we'll see Djokovic, you know, with a gold medal around his neck. It, it won't be any surprise at all. I mean, for Novak Djokovic, I mean, when when the whole uh, game started yesterday, yeah. we felt okay. A one Martin the Potro is a tough draw. We understand, you know, opening match against you know a, a player a, a player like that. that so felt okay. You understand, U.S. Yeah. Open. Remember, you know, he defeated Roger Federer to win exactly. to, to win that. And after that, he had this problem with wrist injuries. Yes. He hasn't played much games and everything. But at the end of the day, coming into the Olympics, you know, he's from Argentina and just. Uh, yeah, like going to the, his neighboring country, at home. <laughs> not like it. And of course, uh, playing this big boy. I mean, yeah. when everyone felt okay with Roger Federer not going and and uh, Rafael Nadal, the battling injuries and exactly, all that. Yeah. So he may he not was... just be the one. But we felt okay, Djokovic will just be the man to actually exactly. uh, get good. Right now, everything it seems to be clear for Andy Murray because against Victor Trek, he was actually clinical. He won his opening round. It's clear. It's clear. Over to you, Andy Murray. But I'm sure Andy Murray is not going to underestimate any one of his opponents because based on what, what he's seen so far, anyone can be beaten on a particular day. It's the Olympics. Everyone wants to win for the country. So, obviously, Andy Murray is the favorite now, but then you still have the likes of uh, uh, this man here, Martin Del Potro, Juan Martin Del Potro, and... Rafael Nadal, you know, regardless of whether he's fit or, uh, okay, whether he's totally fit or not, he can never rule him out. So, he can rule him out. Yeah, but surely Andy Murray is the favorite now. He is the favorite. I'm yeah. still on upset, though. Um, the Williams sisters are out of the doubles, you know, in round one as well. So, you talked about Venus, you know, Venus crashed out in the first round. And, okay, yeah, it wasn't, a, it wasn't expected, yep. but then you could understand, you know, 
Uh, she lost to the, to the Belgian uh, Flipkins Flipkins in that one yeah but for them to go out you know in the doubles defending champions you know the one gold in London and to go out in the first round I think is a major uh, massive um, upset uh, for uh, Serena and Venus but the good thing is Serena Williams is still going strong she won a first round match and she's on course you know to defend a title yeah definitely I, I, I expected her to actually win in the game and I didn't Venus will losing okay was okay yeah. but that doubles that they actually crashed up yeah. that was another big one I wasn't expecting that at all now there's something that Djokovic actually said after that loss he suffered he, he says he says that one of the toughest losses in my life I mean he, I think he was pained by that he was really pained <laughs> I think it surely has to rank as uh, one of the biggest upsets in uh, <laughs> Olympics history. Not easy to handle at all. The wounds are still very fresh for him. So all you need to do is to just go back and we know that the US Open is coming and hopefully just consolidate on that. That will be huge for him. Now, talking about Olympics, we're still there before we move to what's happening uh, to Team Nigeria. Now, a Syrian. Swimmer, remember how we talked about her, you know, when she was leaving, you know, when her parents had to see her to at the airport and, you know, when she spoke about the fact that, okay, whatever they're doing and they're doing it for the almost about six million refugees across the world, that's yeah. what they're trying to do. And right now she was able to win a hit, 100 uh, meters uh, breaststroke. So it's a huge one for her, a good start. Yeah, good start, 18 years old. Um, Yusra Madini, you know, from Syria, you know, we're all been talking about a uh, refugee, refugee Olympic uh, team. Now we've seen them in action, you know, starting with um, Yusra, and she did well. She won her eight, you know, that was eight five, which is okay. awesome, right? But she didn't qualify because she finished up for the first overall but that's not what really matters what matters is she's been given the opportunity to actually show that she's a good swimmer and i mean look at that right there she's really moving fast and um congratulations to uh Yusra, uh madini hopefully we get to see her you know in tokyo four years time she's still very young so she still has a long, she still has a long um career career ahead of her so yeah. I'm surprised when in Tokyo. Yeah, I think this is really historic. You know, when you have someone who actually escaped from Syria last year, you know, yeah. had practically swim away. You know, even have to had to help yeah, others the, and the everything broke down, broke down and, and everything. And right now she's here. You know, awesome. swimming, she's, she's competing swimmer. at the Olympics. Yeah. That's a good one for Great her. Story. Great story. <laughs> Great story. And uh, hopefully we we'll get to see the other uh, guys uh, from South and Sudan and Kenya and the other all the other refugee uh, Olympic athletes. You know, do well at this competition. Okay, that's what we'll be expecting. Of course, also moving on, talking about more competitions now at the Olympics. Uh, we'll move straight to Paralympics. What's yeah. really happening there? I mean, for Russia, fine, they escaped the one for <laughs> the Olympics. But right now, Paralympics, <laughs> Russian athletes will now be there because the IPC felt they cannot just condone what has happened mm. because the report was really gr grievous. It's something that they really can help. But to just tell the uh, IPC in Russia to tell them, look, they're suspended. Mm. Incre incredible stuff, right? Because um, uh, when the story broke uh, yesterday, that's the International uh, Paralympic Committee came out when they said, okay, Russia, you won't be taking part in these years on uh, Paralympic Games. Uh, it was a shock to a lot of people because uh, of what happened, what preceded it when the IOC actually didn't go out and give a total blanket ban on all Russian athletes. So we thought it was going to follow, follow a similar, you know, a similar uh, line. line. But it was, it was totally different. And, and yeah, the news has caught a lot of people by surprise, especially the Russian uh, uh, Paralympians. Uh, it's a shame. But then uh, that's what happens when uh, you get indicted in that um, McLaren uh, report, <laughs> that World Anti-Doping Agency report. Uh, the International Paralympic Committee just felt they didn't have a choice. They just had to ban them totally uh, from the Paralympic Games. And that's where we are at the moment. Yeah, that's where we are. We're just listening to the president of the International Paralympic you know, Fred, uh, Committee yeah. talking about the reason why they were actually banned. They felt they just couldn't help it. They couldn't look at it like that because they felt, look, 
if you have to be doing this, you're actually damaging the athletes because they themselves were not responsible for this. The state was actually responsible for it. Let's listen to the president of IPC. It is strongly of the view that the Russian Paralympic Committee is currently unable to ensure compliance with and the enforcement of the IPC's anti-doping code and the World Anti-Doping Code within its own national jurisdiction. Therefore, it cannot fulfill its fundamental obligations as an IPC member and, as a result, the IPC Governing Board has resolved to suspend the Russian Paralympic Committee with immediate effect. The facts really do hurt. They are an unprecedented attack on every clean athlete who competes in sport. The anti-doping anti system in Russia is broken, corrupted, and entirely compromised. Everything we have observed goes against the very spirit of sport and everything the Paralympic movement stands for. This is why we feel that we had no option but to take this action. Tragically, this situation is not about athletes cheating the system but about a state-run system that is cheating the athletes. I believe the Russian government has catastrophically failed its para-athletes. Their medals over morals mentality disgusts me. The complete corruption of the anti-doping system is contrary to the rules and strikes at the very heart of the spirit of Paralympic sport. It shows a blatant disregard for the health and well-being of athletes and quite simply has no place in Paralympic sport. Their thirst for glory at all costs has severely damaged the integrity and image of all sports and has certainly resulted in a devastating outcome for the Russian Paralympic Committee and para-athletes. Yeah, well, yeah. definitely, it's <laughs> something. I mean, I love what he said when he talked about the fact that it's not just the state-sponsored thing. It's about the athletes. If they have taken into consideration their own welfare, I mean, it's something, you no know, drugs is something that somehow have a long-term effect on yeah, some of these does. athletes and all that. They were not looking at that. They were just looking at how they can actually get more medals, I mean, hosting tournaments and winning, and all these revelations came after that Sochi uh, winter games that they hosted, and of course, expectedly, they won. Mm. Interesting, and um, expectedly, Cecilia, uh, there's been backlash, you know, on the IOC, because a lot of people are wondering if the International Paralympic Committee can actually ban all Russian athletes. Why couldn't the IOC, IOC do the same thing? Okay, okay, and, you know, what and, they have, yeah, and they have come out to obviously uh, defend uh, uh, their decision uh, and stuff like we're going to listen to um, Mark Adams later on on the show. You know, the, the, the thing is, uh, you know, uh, Mark Adams actually said that it's easier for IPC mm. to ban uh, the, the Paralympians because the body is not as big and as huge as it is with yeah. IOC. So definitely that's the reason they actually do that. Well, let's go on the short break. When we come back, we'll get to listen to Mark Adams actually defending the reason why they did not, you know, have a blanket ban on Russia. <laughs> 